Thank you for being ever ready. You're like my dog, people. <laughs> Always there. Yeah? Hey, want a photo? <laughs> okay. Uh, let me. All right, good. People think that I am uh, trying to make my hair differently all the time. Oh, I cut my hair, and it's not like that. Before, I wear short hair, you know? So this one is short, yeah? So because they say it looks good like that. And after it grows longer, this hair also grows a little longer, but still short, yeah? So they think I arrange it like that. <laughs> it's not true. It just came out. It still looks good, so I didn't cut it. Huh? I keep it like that. Okay. Ah, six hours meditation. Ooh. He's still working with this anyway. Yeah, but this one's bigger, huh? Maybe switch it on just in case. Ah, yeah, I need it. Maybe better. But this one has better quality, right? Yes. Yeah, that's the thing. But it doesn't go higher, the volume. Yeah, we can turn higher. Yeah, please, I don't do that. <laughs> Is it better now? Higher, as high as possible. More? That's the highest? Yeah, without feeding back, yeah. Okay. Without feeding back? Okay. Yes. We don't want feedback, do we? No. Okay. Now, I'm going to listen to you. So, whatever you want to say to me, you tell me. Okay? Now is your time to talk. Do you want to say anything? Any questions? Yeah, come. Go ahead. Give a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> now everybody crawls back here. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Tell me. Master, I just want to say thank you for inviting Africa. It's really wonderful to be here. Oh, I'm sorry. They say too, too late, right? No, it was good enough. <laughs> At least we made it. I mean, it was really tight. We got the, the news on the Sunday morning, mm -hmm. and then the Monday we managed to arrange our tickets, oh. and then Tuesday we flew. Okay. And there were some people that are foreigners in our country from other African countries that struggled with visas, so they couldn't make it. Oh, because... But because I told them, uh, I said, uh, Europe, but then later I said, oh, more, because Europe is not that uh, great in numbers, <laughs> so we can have other countries coming, you know, yes. if we have room. It's wonderful. Thank you, Master. So kind of late, huh? It South Africans don't um, need visas? We do, and people that needed the visas managed to get them. Uh -huh. um, but <clears throat> some of us had Italian passports, so there were three practitioners that had Italian passports, and it was very easy for us to come. Mm. And another brother who is South African, he managed, and actually three practitioners mm -hmm. got the Schengen visa very easily in like a day. Oh. So we had a lot of your blessing, and thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome home. Mm. Anyone else? Anybody else? Yeah. Master, you have chosen, you have found, <laughs> you have found the best place in the world ever. It's this is so the best near, place? Near, near, yeah. And near you, yeah, but many, <laughs> many girls said yesterday yeah? that yeah, it is very near us, but it is the most beautiful in Europe. I don't know. Is it? I, I never saw him before, but I was in the middle of the lake swimming there and everybody was so kind even the fishes even mm -hmm. the trees they're friendly yeah everything is it good so, for you and people around yeah i'm glad yeah. Yeah. oh you don't know <laughs> only one was not very friendly wasn't but after yes we <laughs> didn't met him um because uh when i bought this place i just paid for it you know like that Normally, uh, people pay in stages, a little bit first and after. Um, I say, oh, never mind, just, I, I just wipe it all in one go, easier, yeah? So I don't have to come back and sign again and again, because I live very far. And at that time, I didn't know much about airplanes and all these connections or trains, anything, because mostly uh, I, I do it alone. If I tell everybody, please look for this, Look for airplane connections for me, uh, book tickets and all that, then everything goes wrong again. 
you know, I mostly have to do things absolutely alone in order to keep quiet from the negative power. Yeah, so it hears nothing, it knows nothing, <laughs> it's better. But sometimes I have to go through other people, you know. Anyway, this time I had to do it alone, so, and I didn't even know the connection here, I just went by car. It was very long, long, long drive and tiring. So I didn't want to keep going back and forth again. Back and forth many times already. So I paid all in one go. And then the lady of the house you know, was feeling very suspicious. She squeezed me, you know, with a lot of questions. Why? Why are you buying it? What for? <laughs> uh, where were you born? Mm. Were you really born there? <laughs> and she checked my passport and everything. And she squeezed me so much, uh, even the, the lawyer, the notar, her notar, <laughs> not me. I don't even know anybody here. So wherever they took me to sign, I signed it. <laughs> I'm simple, you know. I'm just an old country woman. I'm not so complicated and suspicious of people ever. Yeah, and it was so nice. I said, okay, I like your house. Okay, I buy it. That's it. Very simple. And then she began to feel very suspicious about me. And then she squeezed me even in front of the nota. He's also a lawyer. So the lawyer was very disturbed. He said, everything is okay. Why are you asking so much? <laughs> because she had asked the lawyer, why don't you squeeze her? You know, like ask me many questions first. Is that it? You just tell her to sign, that's it. And I already gave them my passport and, you know, everything. You know, if the money didn't come, then it didn't come, you know. How, <laughs> how else could he prove me, yeah? The passport was brand new with the hologram picture, everything, you know, made in England. <laughs> and he looked everywhere, you know, and everything was open. And she said, you don't ask her anything, that's it. You don't interrogate, you know, that kind of. So anyway, the lawyer was fed up. He said, everything is okay. What else do you want me to ask? This is very good for you. <laughs> she pays the price and she pays everything at once. You should be very happy. You should be thankful to God. <laughs> no more questions. <laughs> and he protected me <laughs> because he was so all nonsense, you know? <laughs> and I said, yeah, he's right. I'm good for you. I'm really good for you. And your lawyer is also very good for you. He arranged everything for your convenience. And the realtor is also very good for you. We are all very good for you. Yeah? You just sit and wait. Yeah, and then the money will come. And she keep asking, asking. Oh, she never had it so good, you know. <laughs> Most people. <laughs> they they because she says she wanted um ten thousand more euros. I said, okay, why not? <laughs> okay, 10,000 more euros, fine. <laughs> and then she began to feel more suspicious, you know. <laughs> what kind of woman <laughs> who's so stupid like this? Must be something wrong <laughs> with her. Must be something wrong with me. She looked at the figure and she, she wanted more money because she had to pay for this and that. I said, okay, why not? <laughs> uh, so I put more 10,000. <laughs> And then she began to ask more questions. Where were you born? <laughs> What's your father doing? <laughs> What's your mother doing? <laughs> Where are they now? <laughs> Where are your sisters? <laughs> you have a brother? <laughs> you have a husband? <laughs> and why not? <laughs> All kinds of things. Is the, the so-called driver, is he your boyfriend, by the way? Is he your boyfriend? I say, no, 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 he has a wife at home. She said, why is the wife not here? I said, she doesn't need to be here. <laughs> Where is she? She stays home. She's also with me. They're both with me. She uh, has to stay home because I'm gone. She has to take care of my dogs. How many dogs you have? Why so many? You know, how many and then why so many? Yeah. And why doesn't the wife come? You know? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and she began to say all kinds of fabricated stories, like I'm going with this guy for holiday and cheating his wife, you know. He's one of my disciples. <laughs> and for God's, <laughs> for God's sake, I don't think he's my type. <laughs> even, even if she's not right, I don't think he's my type. <laughs> I cannot bear how, how, how she even thought of the impossible. <laughs> She must, she must have been a, a kind of, uh, how you say, uh, science fiction writer in a former life, <laughs> or maybe this life as a hobby. 
Or maybe she watched too much criminal television <laughs> or fiction television, <laughs> or she read a lot of uh, gossip newspapers, you know, those, <laughs> those magazines that say who's with who, who, you know, who's not with who, who's divorced and who's married, <laughs> whatever, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was very difficult for me to bear all that. And she didn't just ask with a friendly tone, she asked like the police. <laughs> Oh, my God! But finally, she was kind of okay. Uh, and then I invited her for dinner, you know? And then she saw that I don't drink wine, I don't eat fish. People, animals, people, meat, anything. I'm just vegan. And, I, and she said, oh, my necklace was very nice. I took it off and gave it to her. She said, oh, no, it's very expensive. I said, you are more expensive. <laughs> <laughs> just a joke, you know? She likes it. <laughs> Like, it's very dear, you know? And say, you are more dear to me. <laughs> Play on words, you know. You're more dear to me than this. I have a lot more at home, don't worry. <laughs> so we're very happy after a while, you know. And she gave me some wine. I didn't take it. I gave it back to the agent. I said, we don't drink wine, you know. Not even, not even a drop, just to try a little bit. It's an aperitif. I said, no, not even that. Just try this, it's very good. Not even that, no, thank you. <laughs> We don't like to kill. I said, we don't like to kill animal people. We don't like to kill others, and we don't like to kill ourselves. <laughs> Alcohol kills your brain. I took the opportunity to lecture her back <laughs> about all the good things instead of squeezing people. I said, you know, this is not good, that's not good. Why don't we eat animal people? Because of compassion, we live and we want others to live. Yeah, why don't we drink alcohol? Because it kills your brain. You have so little brain. I said, <laughs> why are you kill it? <laughs> I mean, you all together, like us, you know. Uh, anyway, and uh, when you drink, you, you, you drive, and you might kill other uh, people, passengers, or other car drivers, yeah? Or when you lost your mind, you might even kill deliberately, you know? When you're drunk, so all oh, this is not good for us, so we avoid it. We avoid it to protect ourselves and to protect other people. And then she began to feel, oh, this woman may be not too bad. <laughs> she, she began to feel maybe I was not that bad, you know, the way she thought. So she got friendly. So next time she invited me to this house again to have a look. I said, no, I looked at everything already. I don't need to look a lot. I just look one time, two times, enough already, yeah? And I'm, I'm happy with it. She said, but any time you want to come back, look, you can. I said, yeah, I know that. Thank you very much. And uh, so next time I went to sign, that's it. I didn't even come back here to get the key or anything. I delegated it to somebody else. You know, you know, one of you here. She said, but any time you want to come back, look, you can. I said, yeah, I know that. Thank you very much. And uh, so next time... I went to sign, that's it. I didn't even come back here to get the key or anything. I delegated it to somebody else, one of you here. And then I told them how to do, what to repair and do something, you know, open windows and all that upstairs, make it more bright upstairs, because it's only an attic and it was just bare. There was nothing there, no floor. She just kept things up there, you know, like a storage. So we uh, attempted to do that and then... Uh, yeah, I repaired the roof also. The roof was even leaking and all that, you know? And clean up, yeah? And wash up and change carpet, whatever, everything we did, yeah. All right, so I didn't come. And then she was kind of crying, hey? <laughs> she was crying on the floor. She, she, she wanted to speak to me, you know, or through the person who came for the key because she, she couldn't bear it that I didn't come to even get the key. <laughs> what kind of woman who doesn't care, <laughs> gives more money, gives jewelry, <laughs> doesn't come to get the key when you get the house? And she made me wait for a long time, many months, because she says she must look for another place and blah, 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 and also she has clients to take care. I said, of course, of course you do that, of course. And as soon as you're ready, you tell us. She said she didn't even know when. At first she said, how, how long? And then later she extended longer, <laughs> more money, but <laughs> don't want to go with <laughs> And then so I said, never mind, you take your time, because I think she's an old lady, you know? Why, why do I uh, hustle her, yeah? And it must be very difficult for her to leave a place that she has been working for all her life, you know, almost. 
So I said, take your time, and even if you reconsider, you don't want to sell at all because you feel this is your sentimental place, then please let me know. I just resigned it. That's it, okay? Don't worry, everything is fine. So she kept extending the date. I said, okay, when you're ready, you just call my nota and tell him that you're ready to sign. No rush, no hurry, take your time, okay? Okay, fine. And then finally, Sign the date. I came to sign, and then she squeezed me so much. <laughs> and so next time, I just asked somebody to come and get the key and repair. You know, I just uh, gave the money for them to repair. Yeah, because there was nothing here for them. You know, they didn't even have a car. We had to buy a little car <laughs> so people can come. So so your sister and brothers can go buy food shopping. You know, <laughs> to eat. No, <laughs> otherwise how they walk to the supermarket is very far. Yeah. And then they repaired it, you know, it was very nice of them, and now you have a better place, eh? Yeah. But that woman, she was crying on the phone when I didn't come. I only know you. I don't know this lady. I said, hey, you will know her now. <laughs> she's very nice, and she's one of your countrymen, so you trust her better, no? <laughs> said, no, I trust you. I trust you more. I said, don't worry, she's my confidant. Yeah, you just give her the keys and I signed the paper already. Don't worry about it, because my arm was broken at that time. I could not even sign with the right hand, I had to sign with the left hand. I say, but then uh, I talked to you, I talked to the lawyer, everything is okay. Yeah, so she was crying, say, when will you come back? <laughs> <laughs> this is the second person who cried over me not coming back. There was one more in Canada like that. First, they were squeezing me and did all kinds of things to me, even kicked me out of the rented house because I had dog people. And they were scared that the dog people would scare the neighbors and all that. And then I had to go in a trailer park <laughs> to stay all the time. It was very cold already, October already, until the house was ready. Because we signed already, yeah, but the money had not come, and it's, it's not just money. Is the bureaucracy, you know? It took maybe three weeks, two weeks to get the house. That time I bought a house in Canada. This is a long story. Okay, you just know I bought one, but I sold it already. Don't dream about it. <laughs> it was a very good house next to the... It's an industrial, industrial town, but it's next to the beach, you know, very nice. On the water. But it's very cheap there. It's a little common house, a wood house, like Canada. Because I, I had dogs and pet people at that time. I needed to house them, otherwise I didn't have to even stay in Canada, but that was also very difficult. It's a very difficult story again. And meanwhile, I stay in a trailer park, eh? Yeah. And then later, when I sold the house, I didn't come back to sell. I delegated, you know, one of the residents. And that lady and the gentleman, they both were crying inside. Why you don't come? Why is she not coming back again? <laughs> what for? Oh my God, just to sell the house? You know what I mean? And they were crying every time they talk about me, during all the time that the selling was going on. The resident had been with them every day, you know, almost every day until the house was sold, and they were crying all the time. And uh, later she told her, oh, as uh, your boss, because I say this is uh, my secretary. <laughs> they told the sec oh, your boss is very powerful, you know. All the time she was here, she worked with me, I saw it. She was doing all kinds of charity work, and she didn't want anybody to know about it. That's number one thing. She, but she trusted us, and she went with us shopping and went to <laughs> find out where the poor people were and all that. And uh, but she's very powerful. Whatever she wants, she gets. You know, I noticed that. Well, who is she? <laughs> <laughs> Who's your boss? Oh, uh, so the resident, you know, so-called secretary. Said, oh, she's just a very nice lady. She likes to help people. And they were crying all the time. Uh, same, same with this one of the house. At first, very suspicious and harsh to me, and later, very nice <laughs> touch. And, crying and all that, just to show you how much love is missing in this world. You know, this is not their fault that they are suspicious like that. It's just because they have not been treated kindly all their lifetime. Understand? They have never encountered people who are genuine or kind to them, or really just are not all about money, because they are business people and they are living very hard sometimes. Even the realtor, you know, oh, to sell a house, you have to show maybe sometimes a hundred houses. 
And the clients say, oh, no, I don't want this, I don't want that. And sometimes they don't even know what they want, <laughs> you know. So this realtor was also very surprised that I just saw it, and then <laughs> I got it. I didn't ask questions so much, and everything was okay, you know. Because I know a house is a house, you know, it's never to your taste, right? Unless you build it yourself. And even then, the builder sometimes might change it, you know, <laughs> or influence you to build something that later you regret. So if you want to buy a perfect house, I think you need to wait a little while until you go to heaven, no? Yeah. <laughs> so I never really question a lot and, you know, like uh, splitting hair and all that, you know? So if I buy a house and I feel, okay, it's comfortable for us, there's enough room for everybody, you know? I consider first for everybody if there's room or not. If not you, then my dog people, my, and my team nearby, my people who work around me. Otherwise, I don't consider anything else. You know, the house is safe and has enough room. Yeah? And it has the basics, you know, hot water, <laughs> heater, yeah, electricity, water, and rooms. That's it, you know? And if there's anything else you don't like, of course you can change it. But who cares? What for change anything? Unless the roof's leaking, of course, <laughs> we repair it, and the carpet was old and, of course, you know, one out, then we change it. Yeah? Just for cleanliness, no? Yeah? And of course, if uh, the paint is not good, then we repaint it, yeah? Just just uh, fit enough for you to come, just a little decent, you know, basic. There's no luxury here, yeah, we don't want any. What for? You close your eyes all day or you see nothing. <laughs> luxury, should I put a gold statue here? It matters nothing to you, <laughs> right? If I put an antique or anything, we, we will have to throw it out so that we can have room to sit. So what's the use of anything at all, yeah? The purpose is just for you to come and be comfortable, yeah? Okay. Are you comfortable, by the way? Yes. You are, yeah? Mm. So do treat people with kindness, yeah? This is the lesson. Yeah, okay. After the kindness, they will get used to it, and they will think, oh, there are some kind people after all. Uh, like yesterday, you know, there was a taxi driver who took me only halfway, and then he, he didn't have time anymore. He said he had to run and he arranged for another colleague to come and pick me up, the woman, yeah, the lady who came yesterday. It was my second driver. Even from Klagenfurt to here, I needed two taxis. What? What a time! Two taxis! You understand this? If he didn't have time, then he could have told me. No, he took me, and then halfway through he returned me. He said, oh, I have to arrange for another woman <laughs> to take you because I think I couldn't make it anyway. First, he liked to take me very much. He said, oh, I would really like to take you this beautiful lady, but I really can't. So he, he wanted to take me so much, so I said, oh, just come in. He arranged a seat for me to sit, and then halfway through, he brought me back. He said, no, I really I don't have time. <laughs> I must uh, pick up my client from the airport. I can't let him sit there. First, he really wanted to, you know, but later on, he woke up and he said, no, he could not. I think I must have blinded him. <laughs> he looked at the watch, but he still told me to get in. He knew where I was going, to go on his taxi, and then he brought me back and then called the other taxi to come to pick me up. But even then, I still uh, gave him some money after, you know. So I gave the tip to the lady, and then I said, but, you know, you give the other one you know, 10 euros, because I had only 5 euros with me in my pocket at that time. The rest were big bills, and I didn't want it. They had not ever seen it, five, 500 euro bill. I, I say, see, this is why I could not give him the tip. She said, oh, I never seen this. I heard about it. <laughs> I said, well, you know, if you take a, a big sum like 10,000 from the bank, then they will give you five, 500 euro bill, so you don't have to put a lot of money in your pocket. <laughs> because sometimes I need it for business, you know, buying big things. And she said, yeah, I understand, but I have never seen it. I said, okay, look at it, and she touched it. <laughs> um, so I, I even gave her money to give to the first taxi driver, because at least he arranged another taxi for me, you know? At least he showed his willingness and friendliness. <laughs> he didn't have to do that also, you know? He could have just dropped me there. There was no other taxi around there. And I would have been standing there waiting also, you know? So he arranged a car, and when we arrived, she picked me up immediately. So that was very efficient of him, yeah, and very nice of him. And also he was very nice to his client, even though he was so 
how you say, blinded into taking me into his cab, but afterward he said, no, he's my client, I cannot let him stand in the airport or cannot arrange. I said, can you not arrange for another colleague to pick him up instead and then you can still continue to take me to my place? He said, no, no, he's my client, I better take care of him. So you see what I mean? <laughs> I said, I will give you more money later because, look, I have only 500 bills here, I cannot give you more. I have only like seven dollars with me, but he said, okay, five is enough, good enough. I said, no, no, I will send you another ten, yeah? Because you <laughs> wasted your time. I made you hectic like this <laughs> for me. Uh, thank you anyway. So he, he couldn't believe it. And the woman also couldn't believe it because I said, okay, uh, the fee is only about fifty something. And I said, okay, but I don't have money. Can somebody lend me some? Uh, she asked how much. I said, oh, maybe, oh, 70, 80 something. And the taxi driver, the woman said, oh, about 100. I said, okay, 100. <laughs> Break it up. <laughs> so I gave it all to her later. And she couldn't believe it, you know. Well, she asked for it, no? <laughs> and then she couldn't believe it. I said, but give 10 euros to your colleague, the man who calls you, <laughs> her commission. <laughs> for business uh, connection, no? <laughs> anyway, she could not believe it. I said, oh, never mind, it's normal, you know, because you have a child. I have a son who's 30 and she's alone, she's a widow, you know, and she works even Saturday, Sunday, and she works as a taxi driver and she works as another job just to, to, to raise her son. So I said, it's okay, you're a good woman, it's all right, don't worry. So I invited her for a drink and yes. gave her a lot of fruits and uh, candies, cakes, <laughs> cookies to bring home, and she was always, oh, oh, mine to God, mine God, <laughs> mine God. <laughs> Very nice, you know. Just to show you how much kindness is lacking in the world. So I said, it's okay, you're a good woman, it's all right, don't worry. So I invited her for a drink and, you know, give her a lot of fruits and uh, candies cakes, <laughs> cookies to bring home, and she was always, oh, oh, mine to God, mine God, <laughs> mine God. <laughs> Very nice. Just to show you how much kindness is lacking in the world. You see what I mean? And same with the driver in another city or the, the conductor on the train and all that. He couldn't believe I pay all that money even though, uh, you know, he say I didn't need to. But I said, before I came in here, I told you that I would take the whole cabin just to be alone for a while, if, if you have it, and you say yes. But uh, I have to pay more expensive. I said, of course, and I promised you to pay, so now I have to pay. He said, oh, you say like that, but it's legal. He said, like that. <laughs> I said, no, no, it's not legal. <laughs> you have to pay what you have to pay, yeah? Because he's a Muslim. I said, because Allah is looking at you all the time. You have to be correct. You have to do what you must do. Even if nobody knows, he said, nobody knows. I said, Allah knows. Huh? <laughs> so after a while, I said, please take it. You know, help me to be correct. And later on, uh, after a while, he, he took it. But he couldn't believe it. He kept asking me to take it back because it's so much money. I said, it's very expensive. I said, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it before I entered here. Not that you dragged me in or you cheated me anything. Yeah, I knew it. And it's okay, I, I have money to pay. If I don't have, of course I would accept it as God's gift, but God already gave me the money to pay for it. So I don't want to, to, to take another gift from that. Anyway, so just to show you that uh, uh, this lady, she worked here all her life, you know, to earn her money. And she met you. Can you imagine how many kinds of people? Because this is a hotel, you know? You meet all kinds of people. But even then, she's so suspicious. You understand me? She meets all kinds of people. So that means she has not met kindness. Yeah? She has not met it. People just come and, you know, bargain as much as possible to get a cheap price or whatever. Or, uh, you know, treat her like, okay, <laughs> I come and pay money, I expect this, I expect that, maybe. But they have probably not been kind to her. Maybe not. Otherwise, she wouldn't have been so suspicious, you know. If you own a hotel and you see that kind of money, it's normal, no? If you want to sell a hotel, that's the kind of money you expect and that's the kind of money people would give to you. So why is it so suspicious, you know? <laughs> For example, eh? Yeah. 
So it is very difficult for people to live in this world because kindness is very rare. Yeah. So wherever I can, I make people happy. A taxi driver or a bus conductor with whom I never meet again. If I have some chocolate box with me, I would give them some. Or the stewardess on an airplane, if I have chocolates, I share them with them. It might not be a lot because I cannot carry a lot, but just a, maybe a bar or something like that. Or um, a cleaner at the airport, I just give them a bar of chocolate. If I have a small bar, I give small. If I have big, I give big. Or the sellers in the shop, I buy some chocolate and then return her one box. And they are all very, very surprised and happy. Can you imagine? Nobody ever did that. You know, on Mother's Day or any day, I just do it any day. Because sometimes my family is big, you know, ten dog people, ten bird people, and how many people, you know, sometimes a lot. So I buy a lot sometimes. And she keeps tipping and pushing the things away and puts in the back. It's very tiring for the arms. Do you understand that? The persons who do that all day long, non stop in a supermarket. Imagine it's you. Imagine it, okay? So I always ask them if their arms is all right, is not too tired because you work all day. She said, oh, nobody ever asked me like that. Of course it's very tired, but I have to work. And then I would return to her a box of fancy for chocolate, you know, a good one. Or if I don't have, I run back into the, the shop again and find the chocolate counter, buy a good one, the best one I can find, but decent size, not too big so that she doesn't feel too uh, intimidated and worry about the, the boss, you know. So I bought just the right size and gave to her and said, this is to thank you from all of us <laughs> customers. <laughs> and she was very happy. Or a cashier or, or the person who helped me to bring the shopping out or, or anybody, just to spread kindness. Eh? Maybe they don't need it. Nobody expects anything. Taxi drivers don't expect so much tip, but I give more. Or I give chocolate or cakes, whatever I have with me, just to spread kindness, just to make this world a happier place to live for everyone. So I do that all the time to strangers. This is, uh, some people call it, how you say, uh, random kindness. Yeah, just, just do it any way you can. It doesn't have to be expensive, okay? <laughs> If you don't have a lot of money, it doesn't have to be expensive. Just a small bar of chocolate, yeah, a few candies, anything you have. Or if you don't have, then be very kind and humble, very grateful to them, and say, oh, you do a good job. Yes, and you are very kind, you are very helpful. I don't know how to thank you. May God bless you and your family. And some kind words are also very beautiful. It doesn't have to be always chocolate. Yes, but I also give physical, <laughs> you know, kind words also, and because I can afford it, I give also physical evidence of it. And I say, hey, go home and have a tea break with your family later. Or oh, here's for you, when you have a coffee break, you can share it with your colleagues and all that. And they like it very much, yeah? Of course, chocolate is nice. <laughs> it's not just because of kindness, only, but chocolate people like, no? Or cakes, yeah? Uh, they like, no? Yes. Uh, like. So this is what we should do, because I realize how important it is to be kind to people. It's very important. It lifts up their life, their day. Yeah? And then maybe they look back at their job and say, it's not that bad. People appreciate it very much, my job. Normally he might take it for granted, stretch it out, stretch it. <laughs> uh, stretch your legs out if you want, okay? The one who can. <laughs> Put it on the shoulder of the one who is in front. <laughs> Put your legs up, that's it. Yeah, don't be too tired, okay? Yeah, don't be too tired. Anyway, where were we? Where were we? Huh? Yeah, it's important to be kind to people all the time, all the time. Yeah? Yes, all the time. Even if sometimes they are grumpy to you. Like uh, I've been running from one terminal to another, and finally I found uh, the, <laughs> the real place to, to check in, yeah? But then there were two or three counters, you know, all saying business class, and then one is a business and economy together. So I thought that's okay also. I came over and then she just shut it, <laughs> walked in. So I walked back into my line next door and a man just walked in front of me and said, I'm before you. I said, okay, go ahead, please. <laughs> Other customers all saw it. 
And they were smiling at me. They said, I saw it. <laughs> they said, I saw it. I said, never mind, you know. I've been waiting all afternoon and wasting many hours already. So a few more minutes. It won't hurt me. <laughs> Let him. <laughs> okay. And then and then another woman came running. Dude, are you in a hurry? Are you in a hurry? Can I can I cut in? I said, Oh you can, please. <laughs> please cut in. And then I say I said to the man uh behind me, I say, I have to be behind you now because I I give my place to this lady, so I will be behind you. I said, No, don't worry, don't worry. I'm also like you. I don't <laughs> I don't care anymore. <laughs> so okay, we became friends after, you know? <laughs> Talking a little bit about weather stuff. Wow, waiting for three, four hours. <laughs> so many things to talk about. <laughs> and, you know, history of mankind. <laughs> anyway, and then afterward uh, it was written in nonsense in a newspaper and uh, waiting. And it turned out after a while, anyway, the plane didn't go. <laughs> waiting, waiting, waiting. So the man who cut in front of me, he bumped into me and he smiled at me, and I smiled at him back. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> and then later the airplane returned to the airport anyway, and he passed me by Bruce. <laughs> and I said, hey, why are you in a hurry now? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my God, people are just so, <laughs> so funny, don't you think? <laughs> Grown-up people are so funny and they blame the children. <laughs> yes, it's so funny. <laughs> so that's how things are. People are so used to being competitive, kill others to live, even not to kill animals, people to kill each other, kill colleagues, kill fellow passengers <laughs> just to walk on, you know what I mean? And there's no hurry anywhere. Everybody is going to Vienna, you know, on that plane, and everybody's waiting. So he knew I just step aside for two seconds, and I step back, and he took my place. He said, "No, you are behind me." I said, "Okay, <laughs> go ahead." <laughs> I feel, <laughs> what's what a funny world, you know. I mean, I would never do that, you know, to my fellow passengers. And there's no hurry going anywhere. The whole queue is behind you, the plane won't leave <laughs> without you, without so many customers, because we still had time. We had two hours for check-in, and later we waited many more hours. <laughs> yeah, I hope this guy learned the lesson. No matter how hurry you are, <laughs> if you're not going, you're just not going, baby. <laughs> so much of pushiness, <laughs> pushy, pushing, and then he returned back to where he was, <laughs> square one. <laughs> I hope he really learned his lesson now. Actually, I forgot to tell you, when he was smiling at me, I had about five bars in my little bag. I gave him one bar <laughs> just to revenge for his unkindness to me. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that will sweeten his temperature <laughs> in the future with other passengers and other fellow human beings, you know? <laughs> I'm sure it will. <laughs> so it's very nice to have some chocolate. <laughs> you know, I don't know what else. There must be more nicer chocolates, but uh, that one was also light because it was wafer. I can't afford to carry a lot. I have only a small handbag for this size with all kinds of things in it already, yeah? But I always have some chocolate in case I see some crying children, I give it to them. Yeah, uh, uh, some uh, stressed out old woman or something, or complaining customer, I always give them. And yesterday I lost my sunglasses also because the girl was crying in emergency there. She was very afraid. She's teenage, you know, about 11 years old, and she was crying, crying, and she was so stressed. So I said, hey, look. I have some glasses. Yeah. And I put it on your cell, and you see it become dark, and you don't see anything anymore. <laughs> and it will be no problem. No matter, it's all the same, all dark. You don't see people crying, jumping, anything. So she put it on and said, Wow, who is this pretty princess? And then she smiled, and then everything was better, and she went back to her seat. Yeah. And it was okay. <laughs> so. That, that's the only thing I could give her for my bag at that time, because no more chocolates. <laughs> I don't have any fancy things in my bag, but sunglasses, yeah. <laughs> Teenagers love it, you know? You know, anything, just put it on. I say, oh, this is the latest, you know? It's very cool. <laughs> 
and she was very happy. Yeah, they calmed her down, and she went back to her mother, yeah, or whoever, because the stewardess was trying to calm her and put her in their seat and all that, but she wasn't calm. She kept crying, crying. not loud, yeah, but she was very, obviously, very, very stressed, yeah, very uh, worried, very upset because of the news that the airplane didn't go, that the airplane was having trouble and going back to the original airport and not going back to her home. She was so scared, very, very scared. Ah, man. Yeah, so it's good to have a couple of sunglasses <laughs> in my bag next time. <laughs> chocolate doesn't last forever. <laughs> I keep giving, giving, you know. Chocolate doesn't last forever. <laughs> I keep giving, giving, you know. Originally, I was very tired and I hadn't eaten for a long time. So I thought maybe I would eat vegan chocolate to make me happy. That's what people say, you know. Normally I don't ever eat chocolate unless it's Christmas. <laughs> you know, everybody eats chocolate, so I eat one. But I hadn't eaten for a whole day, you know, very tired, and nothing there was vegan. I didn't want to eat, actually, just something. But I ended up giving it all out. I didn't even have a bite <laughs> because I always saw somebody who needed it more than I did. Yeah, so I ended up having nothing to begin with. And then when I needed to give it to that girl, I had nothing anymore, because we were already on the airplane, you know, and it was chaotic, and they didn't sell chocolate. It was just a short plane, you know, like 15 minutes, one hour, they didn't sell things. They just gave you orange juice or water, which everybody had already. I couldn't even offer her my orange juice. <laughs> she, wouldn't, she wouldn't bother about that, you know? Wow. And I had to tell the lady next door to pray, and I told the gentleman next door, <laughs> whatever, oh my God, what a job. <laughs> I go on an airplane just to relax, close my eyes away from my destination, and then I got to work. <laughs> but it was okay. I just hate it when it circles in the air, you know, at the second airport, and you don't know when it will, will be able to land. That's when I hate it more because it might run out of fuel, <laughs> and everybody panics even more at that time. Yeah. Uh, okay, kindness, okay? The whole thing, blah, 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 up to now, is boiling down to kindness, yeah? And friendliness. People are very grumpy sometimes because they work very hard in life and they've been harassed by other people, yeah? And it goes around like a devil's circle, yeah? So we just break it. We have to break this devil's circle, understand me? Because if we join in, we are so grumpy, and then the circle will get bigger and stronger and include us insider. So if we are still outside the circle, we have the power to break it. Yeah? Once we are inside already, it's difficult. It takes a long time yeah? until somebody comes and breaks it. Because if you are in bad mood with somebody, it takes a long time for you to recover, no? So uh, that means you enter the circle already and must wait until some really nice thing happens or some nice person comes to break it for you. It takes a long time. You are in the circle, it's very difficult to break. If you are inside a prison, difficult to break out, no? Okay. But if you are outside and you have the key, it's easier. Okay, now. Oh my God, just one of your questions. <laughs> Not really question. Okay, I promise I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> you guys can tell me, okay? Whatever you want or ask questions, all right? Yeah. Go ahead. Next. Yeah. I'm sorry to have made you wait so long. The questioner, you want to ask? Yeah. I would like. Yes, to please. please. Yeah. Else. I don't want to be all the time. No, no. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask two things. Yeah. Uh, the first is, the, you know, now you enter this middle Europe, mm. and we are all here. Uh, after the Second World War, there remain a lot of, a lot of uh, fear. Mm. I don't know where, all around, or is somewhere oh. in a subconscious. Yeah. Okay. And now with the Balkan War, this happened again. So uh -huh. whatever bad in life happened again, you know, uh -huh. is worse than before. Uh -huh. So um, I think what you talked this uh, this lack of love is also some sometimes in the air. Mm. I, or it, the bad energy, yeah. Yeah, the bad but energy. But the Balkan and we wasn't, can destroy it, yeah. wasn't as bad as the World War, no? No, but it was very, very terrible. It was very terrible, the Balkan War. Yeah, because you in the were 90s because you were there, you witnessed it. Beg your pardon? Because you were in it. You were nearby. 
Yeah, for everybody who is in it, I think for the people who uh -huh. are. Of course, of course, why is never and beautiful? Why is terrible for everybody? But it's was, not as bad. The scale was not as big as the World War, no? At least it didn't become World War. Yeah. See, yeah. so if you say it is getting worse, it's not getting worse. In this territory, um, I wanted. Uh, so, what's your question now? My question is. Um, we uh, arrange this interview with our president in Slovenia. Uh, we promise that we will meet again. And my question is: are You want to meet the president again? He promised. Yeah, yeah. He okay. want us to. I mean, he to it will be in June or July, but it will be yeah. informal. And you are invited if you if, oh, you, if you can arrange. That's good. And there so? will be some kids and in journalists, but all mm -hmm. informal outside. Mm -hmm. So it can be here also if you think. Could be we, here. We can, yeah, we can, we can arrange that. If you possible. mean he wants to come here? Uh, we can suggest uh, two or three places. So no, you depend on of protocol. I don't understand. You yeah. meet him in his country, no? Yeah, it's very near here. I don't know if the it's president would come here because we it's need. It's better there. You need bodyguards and police and all that, and we we can't afford it. We we don't know any bodyguards. Master is better there if you. Yeah, can. that's if, what I mean. But you are invited. So. I am invited. When? Uh, it depends on you. Oh, okay. June, ju the end of June okay. or July. Maybe or I think about it. Thank you. Yeah. So, what is your question? The question is, uh, uh, he is also now, I think, like crying, like we all are. Uh, crying about sometimes, what? Sometimes, uh, because oh. uh, yeah, it is. He's very sensitive, what, man. Yeah. yeah. Would you please go in sometimes and send some good vegan food? Because yeah. I don't know if they yeah, cook good food for him. Yeah, I don't do know that. if they really cook good food. I don't know if the presidential people know how to cook vegan food. Yeah. So can you please take care, you know, yeah, send it in and taste it first right in front of their faces so they know it's not poison. Yeah? And then send the rest, if, if it's allowed. I really worry about him, he looks very skinny. He's healthy, he's very, very... Healthy. Yeah, but fine, but, fine, know. but he works a lot, you yeah. know, and I don't know he if he has... He had cancer, he had... Uh, uh, he did, but he, he don't have any more, no? No. Yeah, it's okay. No, he's very, he's very uh, what I mean is, I don't know if the presidential yeah. people know how to cook really tasty food. No? So sometimes, is it possible to cook for him? <laughs> you know, politics is sometimes... Volunteer to cook. Yeah. Oh, at least to volunteer do. to cook, <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Well, really, tasty vegan meal for him. Yeah? yeah. Because he's a rare and good man. We must protect him. Okay? So, the question is, uh, what can I do for you? Not, you, not you, you are personally. Slovenian people? Yeah. Okay. So what can so, I do you for know, your country? This small nation is just the first in this mosaic, and, and then it's Croatia and all others around. I mean, not just Yugoslavia, all others. Yes. What happened here sometimes, uh, you know, go all around. But it is yes, the same in Europe. Yeah, it's contaminated, the Europe you know? Is now, yeah. It's very nice when the parliament is uh, colorful, not just white and, and red, or white and blue, or you, white. Which you column? Know? You mean yeah, the I mean, European Parliament? Yeah. Oh, uh, how many people in there? I don't even take notice. The They're candidate. doing a good job. The European Parliament is yeah, doing a good job. Yeah, yeah. The candidate for our president is also one of the Parliament group, and he's also vegetarian. Oh, L good. Yes, you mean the new uh, president? At uh, the end of uh, December, uh -huh. this year, we this will have an election. Won't run for again? a new president. He won't run again? Oh, no, he's sick. I mean, he's sick of it, I think. Oh. I'm sorry to say like that. But okay, I understand. I mean, he had enough. Okay. He doesn't want to be in He doesn't want to be in politics yes. again. So you had this possibility to her uh, mm -hmm. in the interview. Why? Okay, Why is like okay, that? good. Okay. Understand. Yes. The so what is, is the question? Uh, if we, with our love, can solve this split it, you know, feelings in people that, uh, you know, love and fear is always on the horizon. More, more love. And yeah. less fear. So, uh -huh. uh, we are trying. Yeah. <laughs> we are doing it, yes. Yeah. But uh, the whole of humankind is not always with us. Yeah. Some of the humankind people are not with us always. So we have to carry everybody on our shoulders, more or less. <laughs> so that's why it takes a little time. But didn't you see on Supreme Master TV that there's research saying that our world has been more peaceful than ever? Even and now, U.S. troops are withdrawing. Yeah, U.K. troops withdrawing. 
French troops withdrawing from Afghanistan. You don't read the news. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see SMTV. Yeah, true. And now the U.S. already is considering withdrawing the troops. Even uh, uh, the Secretary of State, Condoleezza Rice, supported and uh, the Defense Secretary supports advocating for withdrawing the troops. So, what else you want me to do? I am doing it, quietly, with you. Hmm? I can't just uh, like kill all the baddies so that all the world becomes good. No, we have to take time to let them turn around, yes? Because they are our fellow beings. You see, it's working. We're spreading good news. People are doing it. Yeah? They're doing what we want. You have to be happy. Yeah. My God! <laughs> Next one. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, hello. hello. Choco. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Uh, bien. Bien. Yeah. Zero. Matt, I have two questions. Okay, I'm going to give the microphone to a French translator. Yeah. One yes. translator? Are there Master. any translators there? Master. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Keep it. Yeah. I have two questions. Yeah. Mais euh, avant cela, je vous remercie au nom de tous les initiés dans le monde entier d'avoir euh, entré dans notre vie. I want first to thank you very much in the name of all initiates that you came across into our lives. Mm. La première question a, a trait au maître intérieur. I have a question in regard of the inner master. Mm. Mm. Uh, le maître intérieur nous parle à chaque instant, mais nous sommes toujours occupés des de, de choses de, de ce monde qu'on ne l'écoute pas. The inner master always speaks to us and we never have time to listen to him. Je me suis dit qu'il faudrait que j'écoute mon maître intérieur. Parce que c'est ça la meilleure voix. Mm -hmm. I feel that we have to listen to the, uh, to the inner master. That is the best way. Maintenant, quand je quand j'essaie d'écouter mon maître intérieur, je, je vois que je mets encore ma, ma pensée là-dedans, mon mental. That's right. Uh, and now I feel that when I listen to my inner master, I uh, I found that I'm still listening also to my mind. No, he said he put also his <laughs> idea into it. Okay, yeah, correct. Yes. Mais toi, quand j'essaie d'oublier de ce, j'oublie, de d'oublier cela, et que quelque chose se passe, se réalise dans ma vie, je me suis dit ah, j'ai déjà perçu cette voix, mais je ne l'ai pas écouté, je ne l'ai pas écouté par avant. And uh, sometimes I had this feeling. Sometimes something happens to my life, and I feel oh, I didn't listen to this voice I, uh, I heard inside. Mm -hmm. The master's voice, yeah. Okay. The master's voice. Mais maintenant la question, c'est comment à chaque fois essayer de coûter le maître intérieur, puisque le maître nous parle à chaque instant, mais on n'arrive pas à l'écouter. My question, master, is how to listen to the inner master because each time he speaks to us and we cannot listen to him. It takes practice. Cela demande de la pratique. It takes practice to discriminate the inner guidance from the outer noise. Cela demande de la pratique de distinguer entre la, le guide intérieur et le bruit extérieur. Because we have also a lot of influences from the outside apart from our mind. Parce que non seulement nous avons euh, l'influence de notre propre mental, mais aussi de l'extérieur. So we have to practice. That's why you must meditate every day. Donc il faut pratiquer, et c'est pour cela qu'il faut méditer tous les jours. It takes practice. Cela demande de la pratique. It takes practice to discriminate the inner guidance from the outer noise. Cela demande de la pratique de distinguer entre la, le guide intérieur et le bruit extérieur. Because we have also a lot of influences from outside apart from our mind. Parce que non seulement nous avons euh, l'influence de notre propre mental, mais aussi de l'extérieur. So we have to practice. That's why you must meditate every day. Donc il faut pratiquer, et c'est pour cela qu'il faut méditer tous les jours.
Yes, to remember who you are and that you are the real decider. Pour se rappeler qui nous sommes et que nous sommes le vrai décideur. You are the real master of your own destiny. Que vous êtes le vrai maître de votre destinée. Then you can decide things. Et alors vous pourrez décider des choses. And not being influenced by your uh, brainwashed mind or the influence of other people Et and alors, situations. Et alors vous ne pourrez plus être influencé par votre mental qui a été conditionné et par le, par les autres à l'extérieur et les situations et les situations extérieures. It's very difficult, I know. Je sais que c'est très difficile. That's why I tell you continue to meditate. C'est pour ça que je vous dis de toujours continuer à méditer. If it's easy, I say okay, come, get initiation, and then just die. No need <laughs> to do anything else. Si c'était facile, je vous aurais dit ben venez vous initier et puis après il euh, y aura plus qu'à mourir, il y a rien d'autre à faire. We have been born in this world, life after life, and we have collected a lot of garbage. Nous sommes nés dans ce monde vie après vie et nous avons collecté beaucoup de, de déchets, de mauvaises choses. And now even if you want to do good, you want to be good, it's still a struggle. Et maintenant quand vous voulez être bon, vous, quand vous voulez faire du bien, ça demande encore des combats et de la lutte. Many people I know that so their last life they did many horrible things and this life they follow me already, they follow the teaching and they really try to discipline themselves but the residues of their past are horrendous karma and still clutching onto their being and still do harm unintentionally je connais des gens qui ont eu des vies euh, passées très pas très belles et qui me suivent dans cette vie et qui pratiquent mais à cause des résidus qui s'accrochent encore à eux et qui les qui les retiennent ils arrivent encore à faire des choses pas très bien because uh, like like past life you know um, past life that is something and the the uh, you know the energy is still hanging around in the universe so whenever they reborn again it comes running clutching back to them again parce que qui on dit que qui euh, se ressemble s'assemble les énergies qu'ils ont collectées mauvaises dans la dernière vie elles les suivent dans cette vie dans cette vie là et quoi qu'ils essayent de faire elles elles ressortent so sometimes they don't even want to do anything harmful but by being themselves they can cause harm to other people or even to me Et parfois, même s'ils veulent pas, parfois même s'ils veulent pas faire de mal, et bien, ils arrivent quand même, à, même en voulant pas faire de mal ni à maître ni à autres, ils, ils font quelque chose de peu, pas yeah. très bien. Mm -hmm. That is what is meant by the master takes on the karma of the disciples. Et c'est ce qu'on veut dire par euh, le maître prend le karma des disciples. Et c'est ce que l'on entend par le maître prend le karma des disciples. Okay. <laughs> and so, uh, um, consequently, it's similar to you. Hmm? You might also be influenced by the karma of other people as well. Et donc, par conséquent, c'est ce qui peut te correspondre et que tu peux être influencé par le karma des autres. So it takes a lot of uh, sincerity and reflection in order to be yourself again to be your saintly self, your godly self again, in order to really know what is good for you, and not to be influenced by external circumstances or other people's minds and opinions, and even your own mind. <laughs> et donc cela va te demander beaucoup de, beaucoup de réflexion et beaucoup de, de pratique pour être vraiment euh, pour se retrouver vraiment soi et avoir son esprit saint, son esprit de pratique, de ne pas être influencé par les autres et d'être son vrai soi. This world is like that. It's a big influence on everybody. Ce monde est comme ça. Il a une grosse influence sur tous. I know some people who I knew from past lives. They came from fifth level, four level, and they come down here, they're still mixing around and doing like everybody else, and even not very proper conduct sometimes, because they've been influenced so much by all kinds of traditions, yeah, backgrounds, 
uh, parents, teaching, school teaching, society, yeah, national interest, everything. And they, they do not even get up to the fifth level again or the fourth level again in this lifetime. They have to be reborn and do it again. They don't even find a master. <laughs> yeah, for example, like that. I knew some. But they will, they will not, of course, go down into the hell or anything like that after they die. But still, they won't regain their original status because they were born into this world. Very dangerous world we are in. And they plague me also with all kinds of disaster and trouble and suffering, just to keep me here even. <laughs> yeah, myself. But we have to know what we want. Yeah? We have to. We don't give up. We have to go above all this in order to get home. That's all I can tell you. Okay? Bless yourself, protect yourself with the things I teach you, uh, with uh, all the moral uh, measurements also. And then you will be safer. And then you will get back your status. Okay? A divine status. Otherwise, you can be divine also, but lower level. Yeah? Low third level, middle third level, maybe, or high third level, but not above the third world. Or maybe not above the fourth world, yeah, to go back to the fifth world. Among us, among our group, and only among our group, there are some people from the sixth and seventh levels who came down uh, to assist my mission. Also, but right now they're not even <laughs> the fourth, <laughs> or the fourth maybe, but not even the fifth yet. Do you understand what I'm saying? Huh? The way home is more difficult than the way down here. To to slide out on the slide <laughs> is easy. Or uh, from the mountain top to the mountain foot is easier than to climb back up. Capish? So be diligent. Yeah, that's all I can tell you. And church things by the moral standards, yeah? The, the five precepts, see if anything is harmful or not to anybody, according to that. That is a guideline for you, yeah? And then protect yourself by reciting the holy names all the time and concentrate within whenever you can. Hmm? The holy names. And keep the gift with you, whoever got the gift. Anything, anything that helps you, you keep it with you all the time. All right? Then, even if you don't know whether this is a master talking inside or is this your uh, mind interpreting, at least you don't do any harm. Yeah? And you are protected. Okay? All right. Uh, Yanko Oshos? Yes. What? Yes, <laughs> Okay, bon. Anyone else, baby? Wow, how long since I came here? 11.30, right? Or 12.30? 12. 12.30. Wow. Now it's almost 3 o'clock. How many hours have we been blah blahing? <laughs> Two and a half? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, we take a little pause, yeah? For fresh air? Yeah. Meditating six hours is, is not uh, really very good. Every three hours you make a little break, okay? Maybe ten minutes even. Not like break completely. Not like a po complete pause, yeah? But Go out a little bit, 10, 10 15 minutes, yeah? And then, uh, if you want, yeah? If you don't want, you stay here. And drink cold water or something, refresh yourself, walk around, fresh air, and come back, okay? Every three hours. I know somebody makes this schedule for six hours, but that's optional, all right? Optional. Three hours, take a little rest. If you can wait that long, three hours, you just go out automatically, okay? And, uh, like, for example, 11 o'clock, you meditate, right? Right all the way to five. Can you do that? Did you? Was it okay? You prefer that way? Then it's fine, huh? We must No, because the schedule, like meditate from 11 to five. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, then up to you. Then you don't need. Me, me need. <laughs> me need fresh air. It's stinking around here. <laughs> okay, you want to continue meditate or you want to have a little rest? Rest, 10 minutes. 15. How many twenty? All right. <laughs> Too many people.
اینا تو تو ولی روشش ها سوئیمینگ سوئیمینگ اوکی ایف یو وانت تو گو سوئیم اینی بادی وانت تو گو تو سوئیم گو سوئیم بات هاف ان اور اون ایت کم بیک اوکی اوکی ا ادروایز یو کین میت تو سوئیم دن Oh, one hour. Okay, one hour. All right. What? I, I know that, but you need a little physical. Help. Okay. 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 Okay.